Today, I am very honored to present to you our episode two, where we will discuss the tools for this school year. So let me show you my screen. We will be discussing the RPMS tools for proficient and highly proficient teachers, specifically for our regular teachers. And later on, on the second part, for our teacher broadcasters. Also, at the end of this episode, we will be talking about the alternative classroom observation for you as stipulated in the DepEd Memorandum 4 series of 2022. Are you ready to have an in-depth look into the 18 PPST indicators? So let us now proceed to the comprehensive discussion on the indicators and MOVs for proficient and highly proficient teachers and teacher broadcasters. Let me start our episode this uh, today by uh, telling you the scope of the school year 2021 to 2022 in indicators. This covers both our regular teachers and our full-time teacher broadcasters. Our regular teachers are those who have direct contact with their learners. They also adopt any of the following learning delivery modalities, which we will talk about at the end of this episode. On the other hand, this episode will also cover our full-time teacher broadcasters or those with official reassignment orders to the central office. These are teachers who have no direct contact with students and deliver their lesson through TV-based, radio-based, and or DepEd Teleradio. They create and contextualize videos, lessons, and radio-based instructions. So if you are now ready, let us now proceed to our RPMS tool for proficient and highly proficient teachers. On your screen now is the summary indicators for proficient teachers for both regular teacher and full-time teacher broadcaster. Again, we have 18 PPSD indicators included in the RPMS tool and one plus factor. And these are the last indicators to be integrated in our RPMS tool. This uh, episode, we will be dividing our discussion into two. First, I will be discussing with you our classroom observable indicators. As highlighted on your screen, we also have indicators which are both COI and NCOI or non-classroom observable indicators highlighted all again on your screen. And lastly, our non-classroom observable indicators, those without any highlights. You are seeing now the summer indicators for proficient teachers. Are you ready? If you are, let's proceed. I am showing on your screen our first objective in the RPMS tool, Applied Knowledge of Content Within and Across Curriculum Teaching Areas. And this objective has been with you for the past several years when we integrated PPST to the RPMS because we believe that this objective the application of knowledge of content within and across curriculum teaching areas is really important. That's why our means of verification here is through classroom observation. So let's read our MOV, Classroom Observable Tool Rating Sheet or Inter-Observer Agreement Form from, number one, an observation of synchronous teaching whether it's from limited face-to-face -face teaching, online teaching, or two-way radio instructions. But if option one is not available or if not possible, we go to option two, an observation of a recorded video lesson or audio lesson that is SLM-based or MELC-aligned. But if option one and option two remain uh, unavailable or not possible, we can move to option three an observation of, the of a demonstration teaching 
via LAC. And this is primarily uh, available for our teachers who do modular approach. As you can see in the notes below, for modular approach, demonstration teaching via LAC must reflect the teaching learning process in the said modality. The MOV shall also be complemented with any annotated document, such as the module, a screenshot of instant messaging, a note or notes showing instructions, or even a narrative to indicate occurrence of follow-through, monitoring, and etc. So these are our MOVs. And just let me just remind you, this is not a laundry list of what you can uh, choose or anything that you'd like to, uh, to take from any of the MOVs. It is uh, sequential. Po, no? uh, if you, if uh, you go first with option one, and if it's not possible, you move to option two. And if option one and option two remain unavailable, you go to option three. Now, we discuss the performance indicators for this objective. You will see the differences here that for you to get an outstanding rating, you must demonstrate level seven as shown in the COT rating sheet. For VS, you must demonstrate level six. For satisfactory, you must demonstrate level five. For unsatisfactory, you must demonstrate level four. And for poor, if you have demonstrated level three. So what does these levels mean? We now refer to our COT RPMS rubric. And this is very much helpful for our raters as they rate our teachers. And for our ratees too, for our classroom teachers, if you wish to, uh, to reflect a good demonstration of practice, you may also refer to this. We will see here that each level corresponds to a label and a description. The minimum accepted uh, practice for our proficient teacher is level 6 or consolidating, where we see that the teacher uses well-connected pedagogical aspects of the indicator that consistently are aligned with student development and support students to be successful learners. So let's take a look at a, a deeper uh, explanation of the level descriptions for objective one. As we see here, again, uh, application of knowledge of content within and across curriculum teaching areas. How do we say that a teacher demonstrated level seven or level six, five, four, or three? Let me read you, for instance, level seven. The teacher should be able to apply accurate, in-depth, and broad knowledge of content and pedagogy that creates a conducive learning environment that enables an in-depth and sophisticated understanding of the teaching and learning process to meet individual or group learning needs within and across curriculum teaching areas. Let us take a deeper look of the words used in that description. Again, the teacher should be able to apply accurate, in-depth, and broad knowledge of content and pedagogy. The teacher must also be able uh, to have an in-depth and sophisticated understanding of the teaching and learning process. That will spell the difference between level 7 or outstanding practice to the rest. For instance, in level 6, Accurate and in-depth knowledge, responding to learners' questions in a manner that is responsive to learners' developmental needs and promotes learning. For level five, accurate and in-depth knowledge of most concepts. Level four, accurate knowledge of key concepts. And level three, a teacher might still demonstrate some minor content errors. This COT rubric again, can help our raters as they observe their teachers. But if you are a classroom teacher, if you are the ratee, this rubric can also help you become more aware of your practice. 
the features of practice there can also help us visualize what kind of uh, outstanding practice this rubric looks for. So that's it for our objective one, for our first classroom observable indicators. You are seeing here on your screen another classroom observable indicators. This one, displayed proficient use of mother tongue, Filipino, and English to facilitate teaching and learning. And it follows the same set of MOVs and performance indicators. Let's take a look at the COT rubric. Do we mean that uh, a teacher must be able to speak all languages or at least mother tongue, Filipino, and English? Not necessarily. Because as we look at this document, it's not the number of language present inside the classroom, but rather the level of proficiency a teacher can display, as well as its contribution to the facilitation of the teaching and learning process. For level 7, the teacher must display advanced high sub-level proficiency in the use of mother tongue and or Filipino and or English. And take note, uh, the use of these languages must be able to extensively facilitate teaching and learning, including probing questions and feedback. As we read through the practices from level 6, 5, 4, and 3, we will see their differences. And the clarifications at the bottom part of this document will help us understand what do we mean by advanced high sublevel, advanced mid sublevel, advanced low sublevel, intermediate high sublevel and intermediate mid sublevel again take note their contribution to the facilitation of the teaching and learning process as they also differ across levels you are seeing now on your screen our next classroom observable indicator objective 4 use effective verbal and nonverbal classroom communication strategies to support learner understanding, participation, engagement, and achievement. We also have here Objective 5, established safe and secure learning environments to enhance learning through the consistent implementation of policies, guidelines, and procedures. Objective 6, maintain learning environments that promote fairness, respect, and care to encourage learning. These objectives also follow the same set of means of verification and performance indicators. One tip for us, whether you are the ratee or the rater, please refer to the classroom observable uh, tool rubric for, for uh, these objectives. And that document, you will see that on the link provided in the DepEd memorandum. So that's it for our first few sets of uh, classroom observable indicators. The next few objectives, it's a combination of classroom observable indicators and non-classroom observable indicators. So these are objectives that have set A or set B. It depends on your context. The teacher has the freedom to choose which set of MOVs they will prepare or submit based on their context. Let me clarify that. You will not do both. Rather, based on your context, whichever is more possible for you, then you choose either set A or set B. If you feel that you can uh, uh, present or you can reflect this objective through classroom observation, you can choose set B. Same with uh, objective 8, 9, and 10. So as we discuss uh, the COI element of these objectives, I will also move ahead to its NCOI elements. You will see here in objective 7, set A is also available for our RITIS. So what and we submit for 
Objective 7, if you choose, set A. Any supplementary material, either in print or digital format, made by the Reiti, and if the supplementary material is a product of a group work or collaborative effort between uh, two or more teachers, the Reiti should specify and provide annotations of one contribution, one's contribution to the material. And this supplementary material should also be used in the lesson delivery, highlighting the said objective. This supplementary material could be an activity sheet, one lesson from a self-learning module, a lesson plan, a video lesson, an audio lesson, or other learning materials, either in print or digital format. You just have to specify and provide annotations. For this specific objective, your supplementary material must be complemented with client learner feedback on how the material encouraged our learners to participate, cooperate, and collaborate. Should we submit all of those materials listed down? No. What's important is you submit any of those, even just one, as long as it highlights the maintaining of learning environments that nurture and inspire learners to participate, cooperate, and collaborate in continued learning. How do we know now the differences in the performance indicators? The articulation of the performance indicators can help us. And those that are in uh, uh, bold fonts can help us understand the differences between outstanding, very satisfactory, satisfactory, and unsatisfactory. To get an outstanding rating, we should be able to reflect on our supplementary material that we were able to provide effective and varying learning opportunities that are well aligned with the learning goals and features all elements of collaborative learning. Take note of those uh, descriptors, effective and varying and featuring all elements of collaborative learning. What are those elements of collaborative learning? The note below can help us. Elements of collaborative learning could include positive interdependence, individual accountability, and shared authority in assessing and facilitating one's learning. For VS practice, you will see there that while learning opportunities are effective, they may not necessarily be varying, but these uh, learning opportunities still engage our learners to participate, cooperate, and or collaborate in continued learning. For satisfactory, just a single learning opportunity, you will see that uh, a learning opportunity is in singular form, provided an effective learning opportunity that is well aligned with the learning goals and also still able to engage learners to participate, cooperate, and or collaborate in continued learning. For unsatisfactory, it could be learning opportunity or learning opportunities, but it is or they are partially aligned with the learning goals and only somehow engages learners to participate, cooperate, and or collaborate in continued learning. So at this point, we were also able to take a glimpse on how NCOIs, how objectives with NCOIs articulate their perform performance indicators. Just one, just another tip, kindly read through the words that are in bold and also the notes below each table. Objective 8 also follows the same format. If you are confident to display it through classroom observation, you may do so. But if you wish to reflect it through uh, a supplementary material, you can also do that. But at this point, your supplementary material can already suffice, even without the client learner feedback. Again, you will see there the differences in the performance indicators for this objective. Objective 8 applied a range of successful strategies that maintain learning environments that motivate learners to work productively by assuming responsibility for their own learning. For Objective 9, designed, adapted, and implemented teaching strategies that are responsive to learners with disabilities, 
giftedness and talents, you also have two choices. You can do it through a classroom observation, but if you do not have learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents inside your classroom, you can opt to submit set B or teacher reflection form on this particular objective to be complemented with a certification from school head that you, the RATES classes, have no identified learners with disabilities, giftedness, and or talents. Just take note of the performance indicators expected for each uh, rating. Demonstrated level 5 as shown in the TRS to get an outstanding rating, level 4 for VS, level 3 for satisfactory, and so on. What do those level means? Then, uh, please refer to our documents found in the Google Drive linked, uh, indicated in our DepEd memo for series of 2022. That's also the same with Objective 10, adapted and used culturally appropriate teaching strategies to address the needs of learners from indigenous groups. If you can display that through classroom observation, choose set A. But if you do not have any learners from indigenous groups, refer to set B or TRF on the set objective, complemented by a certification from school head that the rate is classes have no identified learners from indigenous groups. Just a quick reminder on all the indicators that uh, follow classroom observable modalities, you are at least uh, expected to submit a maximum of two MOVs for the whole school year. Just two. But if you wish to go beyond that, it's up to you. Uh, I, I guess my next tip to you is just to choose the two classroom observations with highest scores. But again, you are just expected to submit a maximum of two for the whole school year. So that ends our uh, discussion on the classroom observable indicators. And at this point, we will proceed with the rest of the objectives which have non-classroom observable indicators. We will continue with objective two for our first indicate for our first objective for the non-classroom observable indicators. Objective two reads use research-based knowledge and principles of teaching and learning to enhance professional practice. What do we mean by research-based knowledge? You can look, take a look at the notes below the table. What do we mean by principles of teaching and learning? It's also there. So the notes below, the notes below each table can help us understand our objective, our MOV, also our performance indicators. So what is the MOV for this particular objective? We can submit one lesson plan with annotations identifying the research-based knowledge and or principles of teaching and learning used as basis for planning or designing the lesson. What's now the difference between outstanding to VS to satisfactory to unsatisfactory and poor? The use of research-based knowledge and or principles of teaching and learning should be present in all the components of instruction in the lesson plan aimed at improving student learning. What are those components of instruction? The clarifications you can also see down below the table. The components of instruction include learning objectives, instructional activities, and assessments. All you need to do is to present your lesson plan with annotations identifying the said objective. For a very satisfactory practice, the principles should be present in at least two components, while in satisfactory, present in just one component of instruction. But if the use of research-based knowledge and or principle of teaching and learning, while it is identified in the lesson plan, but 
poorly used as basis for planning and designing the lesson, the rating then would be unsatisfactory. If no acceptable evidence was shown, the rating would be poor. So that is the articulation of performance indicators for this particular objective. And again, as far as our MOVs are concerned, it's not a matter of uh, quantity. It's not, it's not uh, whether you submit 10 or 20 or 300 lesson plans. As long as your loan lesson plan with annotations is able to show us that you are able to use the research-based knowledge and or principles of teaching and learning in all the components. And when we say all, there are just three learning objectives, instructional activities, and assessment. So that's it for objective two. Our next non-classroom observable indicator is objective 11. It says here, adapted and implemented learning programs that ensure relevance and responsiveness to the needs of the learners. Your performance in this uh, particular objective will be based on your presented MOV. We see here that there are four MOVs. Number one, MOV1, proof of evaluation on the implementation of the adapted contextualized learning program. MOV2, Progress Report on the Implementation of the Adapted or Contextualized Learning Program. MOV3, Accomplishment Report, Completion Report, or Technical Report on the Implementation of an Adapted or Contextualized Learning Program. And MOV4, Action Plan, Activity Proposal, or Activity Matrix that shows an Adapted or Contextualized Learning Program. Does this mean that we have to submit all four documents or all four MOVs, not necessarily because when we take a look at the performance indicators, MOV1 is directly reflecting your outstanding practice because you were able to reach this level. You were able to evaluate the adapted and contextualized learning program. And you will not reach this point unless you planned for it you implemented it, and you monitored its progress. So it, this is about uh, your progress as far as the adapted or contextualized learning program is concerned. So, but, but what are learning programs? Again, the notes below will tell us that these are organized or sequenced set of strategies, activities, and tasks that affect learning that may include but not limited to literacy programs, numeracy programs, strategic intervention materials, enrichment programs, remediation programs, intervention modules, ALS modular programs, SPED individualized education programs, among others. So there could be others, a group of teachers or an entire school may even collaborate on a learning program. Just be sure to annotate your contribution to it. And as far as uh, MOV1 is concerned, maybe you are worrying here, who could be uh, the evaluator of your learning program? It says here that the implementer or implementors themselves may also evaluate the effectiveness of their adapted or implemented learning program. What about the evaluation tools? Proof of evaluation may already be your ILMP or the, your individual learning monitoring plan already enclosed in this uh, memorandum from the curriculum and, and, and instruction strand titled Suggested Strategies in Implementing Distance Learning Delivery Modalities for School Year 2020 or 2021. Your proof of evaluation may also be any other similar or contextualized tool used by your school or prescribed by the DepEd Central Office, CI Strand, in succeeding issuances. For Objective 12, utilize assessment data to inform the modification of teaching and learning practices and programs. This objective also follows the same logic with Objective 11. All you need to do is to submit a list of identified least or most mastered skills based on the frequency of errors or correct responses with any 
of the following supporting MOVs. For MOV1, Accomplishment Report for Remedial or Enhancement Activities. This particular supporting MOV will reflect your outstanding practice because you were able to implement a teaching and learning strategy or program using materials based on learner's assessment data as evidenced by your main MOV, which is the list of identified least and or most mastered skills. For supporting MOV number two, or your intervention material used for remediation or reinforcement or enhancement, this reflects your very satisfactory practice because you are able to develop materials based on learner's assessment data as evidenced by your main MOV and this particular supporting MOV. Next to that is your MO, um, uh, supporting MOV number three, your lesson plan or activity log for remediation or enhancement, utilizing your assessment data to modify your teaching and learning practices or programs. You'll get a satisfactory rating because at least you're able to plan for a teaching and learning strategy and or program based on learner's assessment data. For the unsatisfactory practice, Analyze learners' mastered skills based on the frequency of errors and correct responses as evidenced by your main MOV. This means that you were able to submit your main MOV, your list of identified least or most mastered skills, but without any supporting MOV. For Objective 13, Maintained learning environments that are responsive to community contexts, we have here another set of means of verification. But again, MOV1 correspond to your outstanding practice, MOV2 to VS practice, MOV3 for satisfactory practice, and MOV4 for unsatisfactory practice. The notes below will help us understand the meaning and the intent of this particular objective. When we talk about learning environment, this is the classroom and other physical learning areas, even outside the classroom. For community contexts, these refer to situations and all the circumstances in which learners learn from instruction. And when we talk community and or wider school community, it refers to both internal and external stakeholders. This particular objective refers to classroom and school programs, projects, and activities that enrich the learning environment and the wider school community's engagement in the educative process. That's why in MOV1, when you submit an accomplishment report of a program, project, of or, or activity, this directly reflects an outstanding practice because you were able to collaborate with the community stakeholder. But if you only reached the point where you were able to develop program, project, or activity plan, you get a very satisfactory rating because at least you are able to plan with the community stakeholders a PPA that maintains a learning environment responsive to community contexts. MOV3, at least there's a minute or minutes of consultative meetings, you get a satisfactory rating. For MOV4, a communication letter, at least you were able to communicate with the community stakeholders about your program, project, and or activity. More notes below this table. A group of teachers or even the entire school may collaborate on a classroom or school program, project, or activity. And there are also sample activities here that can foster an engaged community in student learning. So read through these notes and you will be able to, uh, to reflect a high level of practice for this objective. For objective 14, reviewed regularly personal teaching practice using existing laws and regulations that apply to the teaching profession and the responsibilities specified in the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. We have here, again, another set of MOVs, but MOV1 directly reflect an outstanding practice, an annotated video or audio recording of your teaching 
that shows impact of regularly reviewing one's teaching practice. You get an outstanding rating here because you were able to exhibit an improved practice through your own teaching. But for, a ver for uh, the very satisfactory rating, an annotated teaching material, whether it's a lesson plan, an activity sheet, assessment material, or any others that shows impact of regularly reviewing one's teaching practice. You get VS because you were able to exhibit an improved practice. It may not be through your teaching, but at least through your teaching material. For MOV3, professional reflection notes as outputs from participation in review of personal practices in four quarters, you get a satisfactory rating. And teachers are expected to submit personal notes in at least four quarters. But if you are a senior high school teacher who follow a semestral structure, the note below tells us that this particular MOV will be at least two reflection notes per semester. And lastly, for MOV4, proof of attendance with date in your LAC session or coaching and mentoring session for the review of personal teaching practice. If you are able to at least submit this proof of attendance, you get an unsatisfactory rating. So again, it's up to us what level of MOV we are ready to submit. I hope that uh, we get to reflect the impact of regularly viewing one's teaching practice in our teaching so that we get an outstanding rating here. Objective 15, complied with and implemented school policies and procedures consistently to foster harmonious relationships with learners, parents, and other stakeholders. Again, the performance here will be based on your presented MOV. If you're able to reach the point where you get to produce your proof of participation or involvement in a school community partnership for the implementation of a school policy or procedure, you get an outstanding rating because you were able to sustain engagement with the learners, parents, guardians, and other stakeholders through school community partnerships. But if you're, you were only able to produce minutes of parent-teacher conference or stakeholders meeting about an implemented school policy or procedure, but with proof of attendance, you get a very satisfactory rating. For MOV3, communication letter about an implemented school policy or procedure sent to a parent or guardian, you get a satisfactory rating. But if you only implemented school policies and procedures without communicating and consulting them to your learners, parents, or guardians and other stakeholders, you get an unsatisfactory rating. For Objective 16, this uh, kind of follows uh, the logic and the template for Objective 2 earlier, where we submit one lesson plan with annotations explaining the application of a learner-centered teaching philosophy as uh, expected of Objective 16. What's important here is we reflect those learning-centered teaching philosophies in all the components of instruction in your lesson plan. These are your learning objectives, instructional activities, and assessments. If you're able to reflect them in those three, you get an outstanding rating. In two components, very satisfactory. In one component, a satisfactory but if you were able to apply your learner-centered teaching philosophy but was poorly used as basis for planning or designing the lesson, you get an unsatisfactory rating. Here on Objective 17, Adopted Practices that Uphold the Dignity of Teaching as a Profession by Exhibiting Qualities Such as Caring Attitude, Respect, and Integrity, we have two sets of uh, of, uh, MO, of MOVs. Number one is the documented feedback, either from your superior, colleagues, learners, parents or guardians, and other stakeholders that directly reflects the rate is good practices that uphold the dignity of teaching as a profession. Then you have a chance to get an outstanding or a very satisfactory rating. 
But what will be the difference? If you were able to get a documented feedback or an affirmation from different school stakeholders, either one superior, one colleague, one learner, or probably three parents, as long as it came from different school stakeholders, you get an outstanding rating. It says here, no, as evidenced by at least two MOV number one. But if you were only able to get at least one document with affirmation from any school stakeholder, could be just one learner or probably one colleague, as evidenced by one MOV number one, you get a very satisfactory rating. Again, it should be a documented feedback or an official document directly reflecting the rate is good practice. Next is the annotated evidence of practice. It could be a, a screenshot of text message or chat or email or any form of communication, a remark from your mentor or master teacher or your school head about your quality, a recognition from the school or school community about one's qualities or could be others, but it indirectly links to the upholding of the dignity of teaching as a profession. That's why you need an annotation. You get a chance to get a satisfactory or unsatisfactory rating. The difference here, again, is that you get at least two MOV number twos to get satisfactory and just one MOV number two for unsatisfactory. For objective 18, set professional development goals based on the Philippine professional standards for teachers. I hope you get to a point that you are able to update your IPCRFDP from phase two so you get an outstanding rating, updated professional development goals during phase two of the RPMS cycle. If you were only able to reach uh, the accomplishment of your mid-year review form, you get VS because at least you were able to discuss your progress on your PD goals with your rater. MOV3, your IPCRFDP, it shows that you are able at least to set your PD goals based on your ESAT results. And four, certification from your ICT coordinator or school head or four call person in charge of ESAT because at least you are able to accomplish the ESAT at the beginning of the school year as evidenced by MOV4. Just a quick reminder here, the DepEd Central Office allows certain adjustments on the timeline of the RPMS cycle. So let's, uh, let's uh, look at that policy. Lastly, for our objective 19, our plus factor, performance will depend on the scope of coverage of your work or activity that contributed to the teaching and learning process and not the quantity. Because if you will observe the MOV for here, for Objective 19, perform various related works or activities that contribute to the teaching and learning process. You will see here lots of bullets, but we are just asking only one. Any proof of any documents listed there could be outside those lists as long as you specify and provide annotations. But again, we're just asking at least one. If you did it beyond the school or community learning center, then you get an outstanding rating. If you're able to get that proof, but within the school or community learning center, you get very satisfactory. Only within the learning area or department, you get satisfactory. Only within the class, you get unsatisfactory. So that ends our presentation of the proficient tool for regular teachers. At this point, you are seeing on your screen the summary indicators for highly proficient teachers for both regular teachers and full-time teacher broadcasters. You have here again COIs, our indicators which can be both COI and NCOIs, and your non-classroom observable indicators. We will breeze through this part of our presentation because as long as we were able to follow the discussion on uh, the proficient tool, then it will be easy for us to understand uh, this tool for our highly proficient teachers. For uh, our first objective for our classroom observable indicators, the uh, MOV here remains the same 
but you have to provide as well proof of attendance of colleagues because the objective here is modeling effective applications of content knowledge within and across curriculum teaching areas. You will see here that there's an adjustment in the performance indicators. Earlier, an outstanding practice is level 7, followed by level 6, 5, 4, and 3. But for our master teachers who are using this tool, the expectations are higher. So the outstanding practice, you should be able to model at least level 8. And our COT rubric will help us again understand what those practices mean. The uh, expected practice for our master teachers is at least level 7, integrating. Or this is where the teacher uses well-connected pedagogical aspects of the indicator to create an environment that addresses individual and group learning goals. We are seeing here the differences or the articulation of uh, levels of practice. For level 8 or outstanding practice, the teacher must be able to apply high-level knowledge of content and pedagogy within and across curriculum teaching areas. This is even higher than having an accurate, in-depth, and broad knowledge of content and pedagogy. And this high level of knowledge of content and pedagogy should be able to empower our learners to acquire and apply successful learning strategies to assist in their development as independent learners. You are now seeing here the differences between each level, level 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. All we have to do is to look at this document found in the Google Drive link shared in the DM4 series of 2022. For objective three, this is the same objective we have seen earlier. It's not, again, on the presence of those three, mother tongue, Filipino, and English. It's not on the number of languages present in your classroom, but rather on the proficiency level and their contribution to the facilitation of the teaching and learning process. So again, we, re we refer to our COT rubric. That's also the same with objective 4, 5, and 6. And for objective 9 and 10, where we have, again, two sets of MOVs. If you can show it uh, through classroom observation, you may do so. But if your class uh, does not have any learners from this particular group of, of, uh, of, of learners, then you go with set B or your teacher reflection form as long as it is complemented with a certification from your school head that your class has no identified learners. If uh, it's uh, Objective 9, you have no identified learners with disabilities, giftedness, and or talents. For Objective 10, your class has no identified learners from indigenous groups. So that's it. That's a quick breezing through to uh, through our classroom observable indicators for our for our uh, highly proficient teachers now we move forward to our non classroom observable indicators for highly proficient teachers for objective 2 we have quite a difference here with uh, the objective 2 of our proficient teachers because here our objective has now something to do with the evaluation with colleagues on the effectiveness of teaching strategies that promote learner achievement in literacy and numeracy. Your MOV here is any supplementary material made by the RATI and used in the lesson delivery that highlights the objectives, whether it's an activity sheet, one lesson from an SLM, a lesson plan, a video lesson, an audio lesson, or any other learning materials. You need to complement it, though, with minutes of FGD with fellow mentors or minutes of coaching and mentoring sessions with your teachers that show the evaluation of teaching strategies that promote learner achievement in literacy and numeracy. The articulation of performance indicators are as follows. For you to get an outstanding rating, you should be able to reflect on your evaluation the adjustments or modification in teaching practices. 
to enhance critical literacy and or critical numeracy skills. But if your uh, evaluation of the strategies only reflect integration of well-connected teaching practices, you get very satisfactory. If your evaluation only reflects consistent application of relevant teaching practices, you get satisfactory. If your uh, evaluation of a strategy or strategies only reflect uh, application of relevant teaching practices, but only in some aspects of the lesson, you get an unsatisfactory rating. That's also the same with uh, our Objective 7, worked with colleagues to share successful strategies that sus- sustain supportive learning environments that nurture and inspire learners to participate, cooperate, and collaborate in continued learning. All you have to do is to submit an MOV that reflects the said objective, complemented with minutes of FGD or minutes of coaching and mentoring session with your teachers. The modeling of varying strategies that sustain a supportive learning environment for learners must be able to show that you recognize each other's learning strengths and the value of contribution of others for you to get an outstanding rating. For VS, the the featuring of all elements of collaborative learning must be present. And for satisfactory, at least engaging our learners to participate, cooperate, and or collaborate. For unsatisfactory, just a single strategy modeled an effective strategy that still engages our learners to participate, cooperate, and or collaborate in class discussions. For objective eight, we also follow the same uh, logic in the submission of MOV. And you are seeing here on your screen the differences in the performance indicators. For outstanding, you must be able to model and discuss with your colleagues effective strategies that reflect modifications in teaching practices. For very satisfactory, you must be able to model and discuss with your colleagues consistent application of teaching practices that successfully motivate our learners to monitor and evaluate their own learning. For satisfactory, at least modeling and discussing with them Varied teaching strategies for unsatisfactory, modeling and discussing with them only one teaching practice that successfully motivate learners to work productively. So those are the differences of the performance indicators for objectives 2, 7, and 8. For objective 11, we follow here again this uh, thought. The performance will be based on your presented MOV. If you were able to reach the point where you get to produce a new or improved design of learning programs, then you get an outstanding rating because you were able to reflect this uh, practice that you worked with your colleagues in redesigning learning programs based on the list of recommendations. MOV2, detailed recommendations on the design of learning programs, very satisfactory because you were able at least to work with colleagues in listing down detailed recommendations on improving the design and learning programs. MOV3, synthesis of the evaluation of the learning programs, satisfactory rating for you because you were able to work with your colleagues in evaluating the design of learning programs. And lastly, own evaluation of the existing learning programs will get you an unsatisfactory rating because you were, while you were able to evaluate the design of learning programs, it is without the help of your colleagues. If we submit MOV1, do we need to append MOVs 2, 3, and 4? Not necessarily because you will not reach this uh, MOV if you did not go through the rest. And again, another uh, tip here, we should be working with our colleagues in what we are doing. Otherwise, we only get unsatisfactory or worse, a poor rating. For Objective 12, worked collaboratively with colleagues to analyze and utilize assessment data to modify practices and programs to further support learner achievement, a learner progress and achievement. We have here one main MOV, accomplishment uh, of a lack, uh, accomplished lack plan 
anchored with the school lack plan to analyze and utilize assessment data to modify uh, practice and or program to further support learner progress and achievement. But you have to complement this with any one used in the implementation of the LAC plan, either minutes of LAC session, any proof of collaborative review, lesson plan with accomplished part six, any proof of collaborative review of intervention materials, accomplishment report, or others. What's important here is we get to understand the differences in the performance indicators. If we were able to evaluate activities with colleagues by looking for key success indicators, then we get an outstanding rating. If we're only able to implement activities with colleagues to address the use of assessment data to modify practices and our programs, we get VS. If we at least explored intervention with our colleagues, then we get satisfactory. But planning activities only uh, uh, with colleagues to address the use of assessment data, then we get unsatisfactory. For objective 13, Again, your performance will be based on your presented MOV. If you reach uh, to a point where you get to produce your synthesis of evaluation of a program, project, or, or activity that maintains the learning environment responsive to community contexts, then you get an outstanding practice. Minutes of consultative meeting with parents or other stake, uh, external stakeholders, you get very satisfactory. Minutes of Focus group discussions with teachers, satisfactory. Only a survey on programs or projects or activities, and satisfactory. Objective 14, discussed with colleagues, teaching and learning practices that apply existing codes, laws, and regulations that apply to the teaching profession and the responsibilities specified in the Code of Ethics for, for professional teachers. We have here sets of uh, MOVs. For MOV1, minutes of LAC sessions or professional meetings, as well as the reviewed annotated evidence of practice of colleagues, you get an outstanding rating. But if your minutes of LAC sessions and professional meetings are only complemented with the reviews of uh, uh, with the reviewed personal reflection notes of colleagues, then you get very satisfactory. So you see the difference here. In MOV1, the minutes should be complemented with reviewed, annotated evidence of practice. While in VS, minutes of LAC sessions is complemented with reviewed personal reflection notes. For MOV3, minutes of LAC sessions, but without any complements, you get satisfactory. MOV4, activity proposal or learning action cell plan, LAC plan, and satisfactory. For objective 15, MOV1 is evaluation report on the implementation of school policies, procedures, or minutes of subject area or grade level meetings or professional meetings on evaluating school policies and procedures. You get an outstanding rating. MOV2, minutes of uh, subject area or grade level meetings or professional meetings on the implementation progress of school policies or procedures as long as you get to provide as well at least two to show discussions held, you get very satisfactory. Why two? Because there must also be progress of implementation as articulated in the VS performance indicator. In three, MOV3, still minutes on subject area of subject area or grade level meeting or professional meeting on disseminating information and implementing school policies and procedures, you get satisfactory rating. Just a proof of implementation, then the rating is unsatisfactory. Objective 16, manifested a learner-centered teaching philosophy in various aspects of practice and support colleagues in enhancing their own learner-centered teaching philosophy. Your MOV1 is a sample lesson plan of colleague with annotations about enhancing their learner-centered teaching philosophy. And this should be your own annotation because the outstanding performance indicator tells us that an outstanding practice is your evaluation of lesson plans of colleagues to enhance their own learner-centered teaching practice. 
MOV2, Minutes of Lack Sessions about Enhancing Teachers, Learner-Centered Teaching Philosophy through Lesson Planning, you get VS. MOV3, Lack Plan for Satisfactory Rating, and just a lesson plan exemplar used during a Lack Session and Satisfactory Rating. Objective 17, identified and utilized personal professional strengths to uphold the dignity of teaching as a profession to help build a positive teaching and learning culture within the school. We have here again four MOVs, your performance coaching and mentoring form, showing guidance given to teachers and remarks in terms of upholding the dignity of teaching. You get an outstanding rating because you were able to identify and utilize personal and professional strengths to uphold the dignity of teaching as a profession to help build a positive teaching and learning culture within the school by inspiring unity in responding to potential threats and risks to the school community. This PMCF should be done by you. You should be able to write your guidance and remarks to our teachers. MOV2, Documented feedback from your superiors, your colleagues, your learners, their parents or guardians or other stakeholders directly reflecting your or the rate's good practices that uphold the dignity of teaching as a profession, you get VS. For MOV3, annotated evidence of practice because they're only indirectly linked to the upholding of the dignity of teaching as a profession, you get satisfactory. For personal notes on one's personal professional strengths, you get unsatisfactory. Objective 18, reflected on the Philippine professional standards for teachers to plan personal professional development goals and assist colleagues in planning and achieving their own goals. This also follows uh, almost the same logic with Objective 18 from the proficient tool only that MOV1 corresponds to outstanding, but MOVs 2 and 3 correspond to VS, MOV4 for satisfactory, and MOV5 to unsatisfactory. Again, the DepEd Central Office allows certain adjustments on the RPMS timeline. And lastly, for plus factor, it's not the quantity of your MOVs, whether they weigh 10 kilos of documents. But what's, what we're looking for here is the quality of your MOV. Your performance will depend on the scope of coverage of the work or activity. If your activity goes beyond the school or community learning center, even if you have only one related work or activity presented here, <laughs> you get an outstanding rating. Within the school, you get very satisfactory. Within the learning area or department, satisfactory. Within your class, and satisfactory. So the real tip here in understanding our proficient and highly proficient tool is really taking good look at the articulation of the MOVs, of the performance indicators, of the notes below each table, and for our classroom observable indicators, our COT RPMS rubric, where there is a descriptor of practice, features of practice, and clarifications on certain phrases and concepts. That ends our discussion on the proficient tool and highly proficient tool for our regular teachers and teacher broadcasters. Before we end our presentation, let me just uh, refresh our mind on the salient points of DM4 series of 2022 as far as alternative classroom observation modalities are concerned. For school year 2021 and 2022, there will be a maximum of two classroom observations to be conducted through any of the following either through synchronous classes, asynchronous classes, lack session, or limited face-to-face -face classes. Again, a maximum of two classroom observations. If you wish to go beyond this, then this will be up to you. 
you even have the discretion to choose uh, the two cluster observations with, with the two highest ratings. You can do that. But the submission, as far as submission is concerned, we're just looking for at least for, the ma for a maximum of two ratings. The selection of classroom observation shall depend on the adopted learning delivery modality of your school. Uh, later on, we will discuss this in detail. For synchronous sessions, this applies to teachers who will adopt online synchronous learning or two-way radio instruction regardless of the number of classes and learners. So you can do so through uh, Google Meet or Zoom or two-way radio instruction. This will apply to you. If this option is not possible, then you consider this next classroom obser uh, observation mode, the asynchronous teaching. This applies to teachers who will adopt online asynchronous learning through video lesson or audio lesson in any of their classes or learners. And this video lesson or audio lesson shall be used in list lesson delivery as part of the supplementary materials or as one of the learning materials for online asynchronous learning or two-way radio instruction. There's a reminder here, it is not the same as the video lesson for TV-based instruction or audio lesson for radio-based instruction that the central office or regional office or division office produces. If options one and two are not possible, then lack session is for you. This applies to teachers who will adopt pure modular learning, either in print or digital, radio-based instructions, for instance, deaf and radio, and TV-based instructions, for instance, deaf and TV. And for our limited face-to-face, this shall only apply to authorized public and private schools that are located in minimal or low-risk areas based on the criteria set by the Department of Health and passed the school safety assessment of DepEd. Authorized public and private schools that are allowed to conduct limited face-to-face -face classes shall follow the usual classroom observation protocols subject to strict observance of COVID-19 health and safety precautions, and this is the important part here, the prevailing community quarantine in your community. If suddenly there had been a, a declaration of a higher alert level status, then we must adjust. You may access the RPMS PPST tools in the link shown on your screen. You will see here the RPMS tools for our regular teachers, for proficient and highly proficient, for our teacher broadcasters, for proficient and highly proficient, also our classroom observable uh, classroom observation tools, RPMS rubric, and many more. Note that you need to use your depth and email address for you to view and download the resource materials. And we will discuss more of these tools in episode three. Want to know more about the RPMS PPST for school year 2021 and 2022? I encourage you to watch episode three on the support materials and frequently asked questions. Thank you so much. And if you have some questions, the contact details of DepEd BHROD and PNU RCTQ are there on your screen. Again, thank you so much and see you on episode three.